I want to speak specifically to fathers today, and that's why we're outside at the park doing this recording. What I want to do is I want to challenge the fathers who are listening, and wives, by the way, tell your husbands they need to listen, to be great dads. I want to challenge you because of this, because when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he said, pray like this, call God our Father our Father who art in heaven. The reason this is important is because dads, you have a unique responsibility and opportunity to either help your kids understand who God is by how you interact and behave or hinder their understanding of who God is by how you interact or behave. So I got three thoughts for you that I want to give you in regards to challenging dads to be great dads. And so dads, you can use these as tools, as just provocative thoughts, and as conversation starters. Ready? Number one, stay with your kids. Number two, play with your kids. Number three, make hay with your kids. So number one, stay with your kids. Number two, play with your kids. Number three, make hay with your kids. Ready? Number one, stay with your kids. Now, when I say stay with your kids, I don't mean just your kids. I mean their kids and their mother. Stay together as a family. Show your kids what it means that there is nothing that can make you break your vows to their mother. Your kids know that that relationship is primary. In fact, their emotional and spiritual health is often tied to the strength of your marriage. And so the best thing that you can do The number one thing you can do to provide emotional stability to your kids is show them that you're going to be there with their mother till death do your part. Remember, dads, your kids are watching. Your daughters are watching, learning what to expect from a one-day future husband or boyfriend. Your sons are watching, learning what to expect from or as a one-day dad and future husband. I always say to daughters, hey, Uh, to the young ladies in our youth group. If you want to know how you're going to be treated by the young man you're dating, the easiest way to identify that is to watch how his dad treats his mom. Because that's the example he's seen growing up on what it means to be a husband and to be a dad. I know it's tough, all right? Listen, I've been divorced. I get it. I, I know the pain and the the hardship and the trials and the battles that you're going through. Here's what I'd like to say to you. Ready? Number one, it's tough to go get help. I get it. No one wants to admit you need help, but do it anyways, right? And be humble enough to know that you need coaching. It's funny to me as I talk about two men that they go, you know, I, I can't go get help. I can't admit I need help. And I'm like, well, you you got help when you learn how to shoot a gun. You got help when you learn how to do uh, this job. You, you got help when you learn how to play this sport. You, you learn, you, got, you had all these coaching moments. But now that you're married, the most important thing, you want to try to figure it out all on your own and never admit you need help. It doesn't make any sense, does it? Right. So let's learn to go get help. Show our children that what it means to be a man isn't that we never have feelings or that we never need help, but that we're smart enough and strong enough to know when to ask for help. Stay with your wife. Stay with your kids. Number two, play with your kids. So we got to stay with your kids, play with your kids. This is a big deal. So many children that I talk to nowadays long for a father who interacts with them. And while they have a father figure at home, they don't have father who is playing with them. I talked with a gentleman just a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about going on a bike ride and he goes, I don't know how to ride a bike. He's 10 years old. And I said, your dad's never showed you how to ride a bike? And he goes, no. I said, he, he never showed you how to ride a bike? And he goes, no, my dad comes home and he plays on video games all day. And I thought, how terribly sad that this father's missing out on the opportunity to show his son how to ride a bike, how to throw a ball, how to do things together, how to climb a tree, how to fall out of the tree and get back up, how to be adventurous and go do things that are a little bit risky and a little bit exciting. Now, listen, I get it. We're in a culture that wants to demasculize all men. In fact, in preparation for this video, I was doing tons tons of research, all right? And literally, this is from one of the feminist ladies who claimed, I'm a feminist, but she goes, I identify a problem in our culture. We are demasculizing men. We are demonizing the very traits that make a man men. We have called men perverts. We have called them evil. We have called them abusive. We have called them torturers. She says, listen, being a man in our culture means that you are toxic, but it's simply not true. 
she was challenging men to step up and actually be men in spite of what our culture says. Now, what was she suggesting we do? This is from a a woman who is a self-avowed feminist who's saying, this is what I expect men to do and what's best for our culture. And this wasn't the only article that I saw women crying out for men to do this. She said, teach our boys how to wrestle. Teach them how to shoot guns. Teach them how to box. Teach them how to wrestle. Teach them how to be a man. Now, I loved it because I'm going, these are all the things I've wanted to say, but if a man says him, you know, I mean, I'm just one of the guys who's talking about myself. And here are ladies who are crying out for men to show their kids how to do these things. Why? Because they recognize as moms that as much as we want to promote this agenda, we still need men who are actually men. So men, teach your kids how to play. And by the way, not just your sons, teach your daughters this too. Go out and interact with them. Shut your PlayStation off. Shut your phone off and be present with your kids. Teach them how to kick a ball, how to play ball, how to climb something, how to get hurt doing it and then get back up. To this day, if you ask my kids, they'll talk about the times where we would play Cowboys and rodeos, when I would get out of my hands and knees and they would climb on my back and I would buck them off and sometimes they would get hurt and I would go, it's okay, we all get hurt, let's stuff, let's go, let's go, we're going to keep going. And they would learn how to push through a little pain. Why? Because that's what it means to be a man. Play with your kids. So we have stay with your kids, play with your kids. And number three, make hay with your kids. Now, I get it. That rhymes. And so that's why it came in there. I couldn't really think of, hey, teach your kids how to do work and how to actually have a job and do that well. So I said, make hay with your kids. Ready? Teach me the value of what it means for hard work. To stay on the job until it's done. To put my not just my time, but my energy and effort into the job that I have. Come home tired. Come home and, and need to rest for a moment because you've worked so hard. But yet, show me that when you're tired, you're still going to make that effort and energy to sacrifice your time and energy for me as a child. Now, that's huge. Where are the dads who are falling asleep on the couch with their kid on them as they're trying to read a book? And I can't tell you how many times I fell asleep reading to my kids long before they did. Where are the dads who, like, I came home and I was exhausted, but I went ahead and did the dishes. I came home, I was exhausted, but I went ahead and did the laundry. I came home, I was exhausted, but I cleaned up the house. I came home, I was exhausted, but I showed you what it means to sacrifice what I wanted for what the family needed and what was best for the family. Why? Because I wanted to show you what love looked like. Why? Because ultimately I want to show you what God looks like. I want to give you easy avenues to understand God, not be a hindrance to understanding your heavenly Father. So men, it's time to step up. Be godly men so that our children can understand what it means when they pray, Our Father who art in heaven. May dads show the way of what it means to our kids when they pray that prayer. Thanks, guys. For more resources, check us out at www.faithignited.church. I look forward to hearing your comments and questions. Have a great day.